Okay. Thanks a lot for introduction. I'm really happy I can have a presentation uh, this year. Yeah, last year I had a presentation about impact of crypto on our ensuring economy to our future. So now I, really, I would like to tell you some fresh information uh, from the crypto on uh, The name of my presentation is the how government push for rather security crypto markets. Basically, it means that. Every time where, where, uh, when FBI, CIA, or DI, or any government organization shut down crypto markets, the security of crypto markets is improved. So thanks to the government, we have more and more secure, free dark markets. It's, the presentation is about this. OK, so firstly, let me introduce myself. So I'm crypto anarchist. Crypto anarchist means that I believe that Crypto technology uh, can help us to achieve a lot of freedom, especially in virtual internet world. Um, I'm also the organizer of the International Crypto Anarchistic Conference, Hackers Congress for All Nepalis. I strongly recommend you to, uh, to visit this conference if you have some time. It's in the, in the heart of uh, Central Europe or Europe. Uh, if I have some time, I can tell you more information about, uh, about this great international crypto anarchist congress. Uh, what I do, I'm ethical hacker. So I have two IT security companies uh, in Slovakia and Austria. We do ethical hacking. So we hack uh, companies for, for money. Uh, I'm also the co-founder of the Bratislava and Prague's hackerspaces. And what can be quite interesting for you is that I'm also the member of Czech, probably the most famous, contemporary anti-government artistic group called Stohoven. So what we did uh, last time, we, we uh, called the flag of the, the, from the president castle, and, uh, and we decentralized this president flag to Bitcoin blockchain. You can find more, more information on the internet. So uh, firstly, like security of crypto markets is a very sensitive topic. What means that uh, most IT security consultants, they really do not want to do uh, or to focus on uh, crypto market security because, you know, it's, a, it's illegal stuff. It's probably not a very good for reputation and so on. But if you're an anarchist and if you do IT security, there is nothing better for, for uh, your research like uh, analyze security of crypto markets. It is necessary to realize that it's the, the security, bad security of crypto markets uh, that may lead to uh, death uh, or death of hundreds of thousands of people on the crypto markets, or uh, they can end up in jail for many, many years. So from this point of view, what I can tell you is that the security of dark markets, the current the biggest dark markets, which uh, uses Tor hidden service or uh, uses I2P hidden service, they're even better than the security, for example, of Gmail or popular social networks, because in this case, it's about, it's about life. Uh, so let's begin with the first real most popular crypto market, uh, which is called Silk Road uh, version one. Uh, you know that Lin, where is Lin? Okay, so, so Lin Ulbricht, uh, who is here is mother of Ross Ulbricht, who, uh, who, who ended up in jail for uh, double life, which is really crazy. Uh, Silver market was extremely popular. It, uh, like revenue was about 1.2 billion and about almost 80 million in commission. Uh, some technical background information about Silk Road. It was single servers with no, uh, no decentralization. In that time, there, we, there, 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 were, no, there were no open, um, open buzzer or shadow project or something like that. It was really quite vulnerable PHP, simple application. Also, there was no uh, uh, two-factor authentication, no multi-seek, and of course, it supported Bitcoins only. No true anonymous cryptocurrencies, like for example, Monero, uh, Zcash, Zcoin, and so on. Uh, but despite all of this, it took two years for FBI to track down this server uh, and, and to reveal the real identity of the, the people be, behind, behind this server. So uh, unfortunately, images are missing in, uh, in my presentation, but this is the image of Ross Ulbricht. Uh, sometimes 
operational security can save you a life, especially if you, if you are involved and if you do um, crypto markets or dark markets. So, so I would like, and now I would like to tell you something more about the current security state of the current security of, of uh, dark markets, which are still alive and which are extremely popular with 100,000 people uh, and 100,000 potential customers. So uh, the first thing is two-factor authentication. Almost all uh, biggest crypto markets in these days, they require using of two-factor authentication. Uh, and to, this two-factor authentication is usually implemented as a uh, encryption of some information using, uh, using your PGP public key. So if you want to use any crypto market, you definitely need, need to generate per of private PGP key and public PGP key. PGP key, and, it, and when you want to authenticate to some crypto markets, the crypto markets ju ju uh, just generate some, some nouns, some information, some text. This text is encrypted with your public PGP key, and you need to prove that you are the owner of a private PGP key, so you need to decrypt this, uh, uh, this encrypted information. And if you do, if you do so, uh, you are allowed to log into the crypto market. Unfortunately, like, uh, synchronous OTP, like you know, for example, for many official legal Bitcoin services like Google Authenticator, are still not used in the case of crypto markets. The, th the thing is that these people, they do not believe in security of smartphones. So when you, when you want to use crypto markets, it's definitely not a good idea to use smartphone at all. Okay, and we have this cool. Okay, cool. Uh, forgotten password. Uh, so, because usually you have no email address associated with, with your crypto market, uh, crypto market account, uh, it's not possibly send uh, easily email um, like for, a forgotten uh, password to, to your email address like it is possible in case of uh, classical traditional uh, eBay, for example, or eShop. So usually many crypto markets solve this thing that you need, uh, f when, you, when you try to register for the first time, uh, a special mnemonic phrase is generated. You need to remember this, uh, uh, this special phrase. Usually it consists of eight English words. And you have to be able, uh, and when you want to retrieve, when you want to get your new passport, uh, password, you need just to put these eight English words. Anti-DDoS uh, protection. This is more, maybe more technical, but I, I promise I will skip all technical parts. Uh, like most crypto, more store hidden services or more, most crypto markets, as at least the biggest one, they are under, under constant distributed denial of service attacks all of the time. So uh, usually, if the if the attacker has access to the multiple Tor nodes, uh, he can he can do something which is called statistical measures and can compromise through security, especially if you, if you are the American government and you have access to, 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 to many nodes, uh, you can do some, something like this. But it's quite expensive, and you need to have access to many nodes. Uh, many crypto markets, they use uh, quite easy anti-DDoS uh, protection, which is called CAPTCHA. And when I did some my personal research, I found out that I, I was I was able to crack this capture in a completely automatic way in a few seconds. Also, quite interesting, for example, some crypto markets like Alphabay, uh, it, it uses double tour security. So it, it means that one tour connection is encapsulated to another connection. And usually, if you are a trusted uh, seller or if you are a trusted buyer, you have your own tour private address. And it means that even if the Tor, if the main Tor public address is under strong, aggressive denial of service attack, you can still log in and you can still buy and you can still uh, sell on, on the given crypto market. Contracts. This is quite interesting thing that, uh, like the Alphabet and also some other crypto markets, they, they have a special contract. The system, uh, you, can, you can make a, any contract with any seller or any buyer. Uh, it's also co called digital contract. It's verified by Alphabay, so you can specify uh, many different things it's in this contract. Each contract costs uh, five dollars in Bitcoin or in Monero, and you need to pay this uh, this amount to the, the market administrator. Multisig. Who knows what is multisig? Okay, fine. So 
uh, seek significantly increases the security of uh, cryptocurrencies because it means that uh, the given digital signature, when you want to send your cryptocurrency somewhere, it has to be signed by, by two parties from three, for example. Uh, in, in this situation, we uh, call it like two of three signature address, which basically means that you have uh, one private address and the crypto market has the second uh, private address. So when you want to send some information, both these uh, private keys have to be used. So in the situation where uh, like FBI, DAA, or some government agency shut down the crypto markets, and the crypto market that they use, multisig, they are definitely not able to, to gain or to get uh, Bitcoins from the from the given uh, given server, like it was possible in case of original Silk Road market. So this is some technical st uh, technical information how multisig exactly works. Uh, I'm going to skip this slide. Tumble your Bitcoin. So uh, quite interesting thing is that Monero. Do you know Monero? Okay, the Monero is a true anonymous cryptocurrency. Like Monero is becoming or. I even think that it, it, it becomes a default cryptocurrency standard for crypto markets. So most biggest current crypto markets, they, they, in addition to Bitcoin, they started to support Monero, because Monero is a true anonymous cryptocurrency. Like Bitcoin is an, many people think that Bitcoin is an um, anonym, anonymous currency. That's not true. Bitcoin is a pseudo-anonymous cryptocurrency because you have a public blockchain. Uh, when you analyze the, the, the digital transaction in the, your public blockchain, you can reveal a lot of sensitive information. So, but this is not possible in case of an anonymous true uh, cryptocurrencies, like, for example, Monero, Zcash, Zcoin, Dash, or Shadow Coins, for example. And uh, so there are many services how you can, uh, how you can mix your Bitcoins. Uh, some people used to, used to call this like a Bitcoin laundry. But uh, basically, it's a mixing service. Uh, usually, you need to pay, for example, 1% from the whole transaction. And what I can recommend you, and it pro probably the best way how to launder your, your Bitcoin, is uh, through Monero. So, so firstly, you need to buy Monero. Like, for example, uh, one of the biggest Bitcoin exchange, Kraken, they started to support Monero a few weeks ago. So you can use uh, our Poly Poloniex, the one of the biggest altcoin uh, Alcon Exchange. So, so you can buy uh, your Monero uh, using Kraken or, or, or uh, Poloniex. And there is a very nice service called XMR.2. And you can use this service to uh, laundry your Monero. And you, and you receive on the other side completely clean. Completely clean means without any history Bitcoins. OK. True anonymous cryptocurrency. So as I mentioned, uh, the biggest dark markets like Alphabet and Aussies they, they support uh, Monero. Uh, the thing about Monero is that uh, your transaction cannot be easily visible on blockchain. So, so even if, uh, for example, like the problem of the uh, silver market was that when the FBI shut down the, the crypto markets, they can associate the physical addresses uh, of, of people who, who send some stuff to their address with their uh, Bitcoin addresses. And this is a problem. Because uh, this information uh, can be misused, can be exploited. But this is not possible in, uh, with, uh, with Monero. Uh, Monero uses something which, uh, what is called ring signatures. It's a special property of cryptogra uh, cryptography. And it basically means that all your Monero transactions are untraceable. Uh, so it is not possible to link the given user to the specific transaction. You just know that you just put uh, some money uh, to block, and you just see some money, uh, the, some output from the block, but you are not able to, to, to do any correlation like it is possible in case of uh, Bitcoin. OK, so this is a monitor chart. So uh, you can see that, like, 22nd August, it, it was a time when uh, the, the biggest drug markets, they announced they want, uh, uh, they want to support Monero. So the, the, the rate of Monero was increased quite a lot. And, and uh, approximately uh, 
3rd September, they officially started support Monero. And now the rate uh, of Monero is quite stable. Um, I would like to make some interesting comparison uh, between, more, um, between Monero and, and uh, Bitcoin. The problem with Bitcoin is that the Bitcoin is like too official. So, for example, if some government, for example, in China, they decide uh, they decide to 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 to, to, to uh, blo block Bitcoin, for example, uh, it automatically means that uh, Bitcoin is or will going uh, will be going down. Uh, so, so any so so Bitcoin uh, definitely reflects the uh, decision of many politicians around the world. But this is not case of Monero because Monero is basically used primarily by dark market, and dark market really does not care about about decision of some uh, of some politician. So, so the most dangerous things, what I personally think, the most 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 dangerous thing for for Monero, what can what can happen in the future, is that uh, all governments decide to legalize all drugs and guns. Of and when this happens, people usually do not have, uh, will, will not have motivation to use, uh, to use Monero and switch to Bitcoin because Bitcoin has more liquidity, for example, uh, than um, uh, Monero. But personally, I think this will never happen if we have government. The drugs will be always prohibited, especially hard, hard drugs. Okay. So... Uh, as I, as I told you, if you want to use dark markets, you definitely need, need to use PGP. So you need to generate public PGP key, pu pu uh, private PGP key. Uh, some crypto markets offer you uh, to encrypt all your storage, all your messages using your public PGP key. So even, if only you, when you open uh, the given messages in your, in your browser, you are able to decrypt all these messages. Uh, this feature is called automatic message encryption. Sometimes uh, I, I saw some uh, crypto markets, they use PGP webmail client, uh, what basically means that the given browser uh, has access to the, your private PGP key. Personally, it's like, I think it is not a good idea. You should not use it because uh, you can use, for example, HTML5 uh, storage to store your PGP private key. Uh, it's a very comfortable uh, for, for users, but I definitely do not recommend to, to to do something like this. <clears throat> client side security. So, uh, so when you're a client and you, and you want to access dark markets, definitely a good idea is to, uh, uh, to pay some anonymous VPNs. At this, uh, in these days, there are many, many different VPNs. Uh, you can buy com in a completely anonymous way and pay, uh, pay with Bitcoins. Uh, good idea is to to encapsulate your Tor connection inside your, inside your VPN. All good crypto markets, they do not use JavaScript. So you should definitely switch off the JavaScript. Uh, good crypto market, they, they even inform you that you should uh, disable JavaScript because it's another good uh, practice. The problem was that uh, historically, there were some zero-day vulnerabilities. Zero-day vulnerabilities means that they, they, are, they, they are not uh, available public security patches for these vulnerabilities. And uh, using these zero-day vulnerabilities in Windows version of Firefox, the government uh, could access to the uh, browsers of many uh, customers of dark markets. Also, there is a special anonymous uh, Linux distribution, which is called TELS. So, uh, this uh, distribution is extremely popular, especially by dissidents and journalists in some dictatorship countries. So I, I strongly recommend you to, to use TELS. Uh, okay. Server-side security. So this is uh, a special information when you, uh, when you want to start your own crypto market. So usually all server uh, and clients, they should always use full disk encryption. Ideally, with the hidden volumes. You know what is, uh, uh, what is high, uh, hidden volumes? It basically means that if there is a coercion and someone, f uh, someone forces you to tell, uh, to tell a uh, um, password, you can decrypt completely different part of your disk 
and the given person is not able uh, to find out that you have some special uh, hidden disk. Uh, so this is especially practical in the UK, because in the UK they have something like key disclosure law, which means that according to the British law, uh, you are obligated to provide all your passport, all your encryption keys, all your PGP private keys, in case you are suspicious of anything without proof, without evidence. This is quite important to say. Um, also, usually these servers uh, by the biggest star markets, uh, they are virtualized in many uh, anonymous server housing that are paid uh, pay by Bitcoin, so it's not possible to uh, associate the real identity of real p people uh, from uh, these crypto markets. Uh, all these uh, administrators, they use store when they want to, or I2P, anonymization net network when they want to access these crypto markets. Uh, as I already mentioned, some crypto markets, like for example Alphabay, they use double tour security system, uh, uh, which can be good, also bad in some specific situation. And if you are a good customer, good seller, uh, good buyer, you usually uh, get something like private onion gateway, what basically means you are immune against aggressive denial, distributed denial of uh, uh, service attacks. And this is quite interesting uh, thing that all current crypto markets, uh, especially the, the biggest one, they have bitcoins or moneros or cryptocurrency stored on a completely different server. So even if FBI, CIDA shut down uh, the given server, uh, they are not able to, uh, to find any bitcoins or any, uh, uh, any other cryptocurrency. Decentralized crypto market. This is interesting, and uh, probably the most prospective project in this time is definitely Open Buzzer version, version 2. Uh, it's quite new information. Just a few days ago, Open Buzzer uh, like, uh, started to support Tor. So now you can, you can have completely decentralized your own eShop. Uh, uh, through Tor, what basically means, because, because of this decent, decentralized nature, it's not technically possible for anyone, for the government, to shut down the given crypto market or to find any information about who is behind the, the, the given crypto market. This really in, uh, necessary to say. So basically, it means that thanks to decentralized Imagine that open buzzer is something like eBay, but it's completely decentralized. So anyone can uh, provide uh, provides, uh, his or her services or products to anyone and pay by Bitcoin. I think that at this time, Monero still doesn't support Monero or some anonymous cryptocurrency, but it's probably only a question of time. Um, in addition to open buzzer version, version 2, there are some other projects. Uh, for example, Shadow Project. Uh, this is quite an um, interesting project. You should definitely check it. Uh, they have also uh, th is a quite complex system. They have, uh, they have their own cryptocurrency, which is called Shadow Coins. It's a completely anonymous, true cryptocurrency. You can uh, trade this cryptocurrency at Poloniex, for example. And also, I would like to mention another two projects, like Axis Mundi or Mundi at Bid Markets, but these projects are unfortunately only in, in alpha versions. Okay, so the question is, should I use Tor or should I use I2P? So uh, from the theoretical point of view, what I think is that I2P protocol is more secure uh, than Tor protocol. But the problem of I2P is that I2P uh, has only too few nodes. Uh, so uh, practically, if you have any anonymization network with uh, only few nodes, it cannot be enough secure. It, it cannot provide you enough uh, privacy. So. Uh, the only solution when you want to have privacy in these days is Tor. So what I can tell you is that Tor, Tor is probably is not the, the most secure one, but we have no other alternative. Okay, what, but what, 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 what is necessary to say is that uh, um, the government agencies, they know Tor project, uh, protocol quite well. So many crypto anarchists uh, they think, because of this, uh, they, they decided to prefer I2P protocol just because they think like that FBI or CIA, they do not have inf enough information to crack this protocol or to compromise this protocol. 
Okay, crypto market best practices. So um, definitely, if you want to use crypto markets, if you want to trade anything, you want to buy, you want to sell, uh, I strongly recommend you to smartly seek two-factor authentication, which is mandatory, which is required by all uh, current crypto markets. Of course, you have to use PGP. Uh, some crypto markets disallow something which is called finalized early. Uh, so uh, from the customer's perspective, it is not a good idea to use finalized early. If you are inter interested about this feature, feature, just let me know. I can explain you in more details. Uh, generally, if you are involved in dark markets, crypto markets, do not use Bitcoin. Bitcoin is not secure enough. So there are two anonymous cryptocurrencies, for example, Monero, or Zcash, or Zcoin, or Dash, or Shadowcoin. At least Monero is really good, accepted by the biggest crypto markets. This is quite interesting thing, currency accounts. Uh, like, if you don't trust cryptocurrency just because of the fluctuation of crypto, uh, cryptocurrencies is too high, I recommend you to try something like currency accounts so you can deposit your bitcoins or you can deposit your monero to your uh, uh, to your crypto uh, crypto market account and you can transfer uh, you can transfer your cryptocurrency to american dollars or euros or some fiat currency for a specific fee for example 5% uh, person fee and thanks to this you can avoid potential volatility of cryptocurrencies this is quite interesting i was thinking how this guy exactly uh, implemented this feature, especially because it's a, these guys are, are completely black hat uh, or, or dark markets out, 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 out of the government. They uh, cannot use officially uh, Bitcoin exchanges. Okay, you know, you know what is dead drops? This is really quite cool feature of the current crypto markets. So dead drops basically means that um, Traditional way how you order some stuff from the crypto market is that uh, firstly you need pay you need pay in Bitcoin in Monero uh, uh, or you need to deposit your Bitcoin or Monero to the crypto market. Uh, the crypto market sends a notification to the seller that you have already paid. Uh, the the given the given seller uh, delivers or sends you a, a specific stuff to your address. And when you receive this address, usually you have 17 days to finalize the given transaction. The thing is that you need to have a physical address if you need to order anything from the, crypt from the crypto markets. And this is a problem because, for example, I, a few days ago or two weeks ago, I visited Panama, and in Panama, they don't have physical mailboxes. I mean, mailboxes for snail mail. Uh, so it means they, they, use only deliver, they use only courier service, nothing more. So in this situation, uh, you can use something which is called dead drops. So when you pay for your stuff uh, uh, at the given crypto market, you receive just two information. You receive GPS coordinates, and you receive panoramatic video of, uh, of the given place. So you just go to the specific GPS coordinates, you play the, the, uh, the given uh, panorama video, and you know exactly when your stuff, your products, is physically st uh, stored, and so you can take it, you can pick up it, and go away. And so, so, uh, and this is called dead drops. So you have a sp special part or special, uh, how to say, spe special employees of crypto markets uh, uh, who are called drop men or delivery boys. And these guys are responsible to come to some place. Uh, they, need to they need to officially buy, buy a lot of stuff, uh, deliver this uh, stuff to some specific address, and then and they uh, like wholesale, and they just distribute all this stuff to some specific places. Um, so there are some quite of reseller or something like that. What is quite interesting that. What I can tell you that it's only a question of, of time when these dead drops, like these physical local dealers, will be replaced by drones. Because, uh, for example, in case of cocaine, when you want to deliver cocaine from, uh, uh, from South America to Europe, uh, like the, the price, like 
the, the price in Europe of cocaine is probably 1,000% higher than, than in South America. So 90, 90 or 95% of the whole price of cocaine in Europe is just a risk. The risk, because all dealers, all these uh, people uh, involved in, in narco-mafia, uh, they need to risk their own lives. And if you are able to delegate this risk to drones, what it means is that you can lower your price. You can offer your drugs for a much better price. So what I think is only a question of time when these uh, physical dealers of drugs or probably also guns will be just replaced by drones. Okay, deep top the crypto market program. Summary. Okay, so uh, definitely what I can tell you uh, is that security of crypto market has been significantly improved over the la last few years. And it was thanks to the government. Every shutdown of any crypto market caused that uh, the, next crypto, uh, the next crypto market was more secure, more immune against, against any other potential shutdown. So in these days, we have the biggest crypto markets like Alphabet, Dream Market, Auto Market, Valhalla, and these markets are online for many years without any shutdown by the government agencies. So what you can see here, we can see that the war on drugs purely technically cannot be won. So because what I can tell you is that technologically, crypto anarchists and crypto markets are always one step ahead to the government. So, so, uh, so like what, what, what summarization is that the government intervention makes crypto market more resilient. It's simple the fact. So uh, what we can see, that think, especially in case of crypto markets, that uh, all monies, uh, all millions of taxpayers' monies are spent for really meaningless war on drugs. And now, I would like to tell you something about, about, about us, crypto anarchists in Prague. So the crypto anarchists are real people, they really exist in the physical world. Um, four years ago, we started quite a unique place in central in heart of Prague, uh, in central of Europe uh, in Prague, which is called Parallel Polis. It's a real physical building. This is a photo, unfortunately. I don't know. So, so Parallel Polis is a freedom think tank. It's a unique freedom crypto anarchist think tank in Europe. We have three floors building, which is quite big. The first on the ground, there is a Bitcoin coffee. It's, it's the, the first world Bitcoin only coffee, so we do, not accept, we do not accept any fiat currencies. We have two Bitcoin ATM machines, so if you want to buy coffee or if you want to buy any stuff from our uh, place, you need to change your check crowns or dollars to Bitcoins because we accept Bitcoins only. Uh, the second floor of our parallel police is a co-working space. space. We used to call it Paper Hub. It's one of the most popular co-working space in Prague. And the third floor of our Palonipolis is Institute of Crypto Anarchy. Institute of Crypto Anarchy is a bunch of crypto anarchists, and we are responsible for organizing all crypto anarchistic events. Like in, in these days, we used to have 30, 30 events per one month. So almost, almost every each day, we, we have at least one, uh, one event, so this is really big. And all of you, I would like to invite all of you to, real, uh, to Unique Parallel Police Congress 2017, uh, which will take uh, place in Prague during 6th, from 6th until 8th of October. The topic of this uh, crypto anarchistic uh, conference will be Liberate. Subtopic will be towards your financial freedom. And this Congress, Crypto Anarchistic Congress, will be especially focused on anonymous, true anonymous cryptocurrencies, like Monero, Zcash, Zcoin, Dash, and Shadowcoins, also on decentralized markets and exchanges. And, uh, and now uh, I would like to read HCBP 70 Manifesto. Uh, which was prepared especially for this year of the conference. 
Real digital privacy starts with protecting your financial transaction, leaving no traces, making impossible to see or intervene your voluntary economical interaction. With the rise of anonymous cryptocurrencies, for the first time in our human history, we can do a global business and stay anonymous. Anonymous prediction markets, anonymous anti-government insurance, anonymous crowdfunded whistleblowing, decentralized crypto markets, all these crypto technologies will undermine the current authoritative systems and make the significant change silently, with no violence or politician. It's time to liberate yourself. Thank you a lot. That's a question? All right. Question. I think we've got a few minutes left, and we've got about five minutes. Would you want to take some questions? Yeah, definitely. Oh, excellent. Well, then, please, we've got the microphone over here. Okay, so you if have you any have a question, question standing by, we'd love to hear from you. And just raise yeah. your hand. Hi. Um, do you think, great presentation, I appreciate your work, it's really okay. great. Do you think it's possible that we have uh, some Amazon in the future just with cryptocurrencies? Yeah. Like that you can really buy anything, even a chair. I'm more than sure. And the thing, I really recommend you uh, to read the book from Paul Rosenberg, A Lodging of Wafering Man. It's a, it's a quote from Bible. Check the, check the book, uh, a, lodging, a Lodging of Wafering Man. And in this book was written before Bitcoin. This book predicted Bitcoin, predicted cryptocurrencies, and also predicted the system completely decentralized, uh, completely decentralized market for everything. So imagine like Uber for, for everything. Like imagine that it's only a question of time, this technically feasible these days, that in the future we will have something like you Uber, for, but for any service, for any product, and, it, and this service will use anonymous, true anonymous cryptocurrencies. So the government will have no way to, 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 um, to analyze any transaction in the system. And also this system will be completely decentralized based on open buzzer or based on um, like shadow project or some similar decentralized system. So technically, similarly like in case of Bitcoin, it will be impossible to shut down this system. Open bar that. A lodging of Paul Rosenberg, P O P O U L Rosenberg, a lodging, a lodging of wafering man. A eh? lodging, L O D G I N G W A Y uh, of. Lodging of a, uh, uh, w a a i a y f a r e man. Paul, can we put that on a website, possibly? That maybe, way, maybe, on a website, can, we can I, have I it can, somewhere, I, I mean, and it would be I good. We've only got a couple moments left here, yeah. so we can put that somewhere. We can find it quickly. But if I think we have another question. Book, just come after this presentation, and uh, it's possible to download this book even in PDF format quite yeah. easily. What? I can understand it correctly. Yeah, we have two minutes left, so let's uh, go to the next what? question, but okay. uh, make sure well, okay, we can get after. offline okay. afterwards. So the yeah, what's it, what, I can get Short the question. Short question next. All right, uh, just, I, I would like to get, like, kind of pick your brains on uh, what's the difference, like for the um, average user from uh, a cryptocurrency like Dash or Zcash or Monero, what would be kind of like the main difference for an average user to understand and if there are some or they're kind of practically the same. Uh, I know Monero uses ring signatures, which is a different protocol than the one uses, that Dash uses and stuff like that, but I would kind of just like pick your brains on what you have to say on that field. Two anonymous cryptocurrency, uh, they um, uses a, a bit different crypto to achieve the anonymity. So for example, Monero uh, uses uh, ring signature. Uh, Zcash, Zcash use, uses quite complex crypto, uh, which is probably not very uh, well understood 
this, this may be a problem. So there are some technical differences. Uh, what, I, what I want to tell you is that the problem of crypto markets at this time is that they, they, they cannot be used by normal people, like ordinary people, because it's too complex. So when, if you are a normal guy, you're not able to, to, to buy, for example, your Monero. It's complicated for you. So what I expect that uh, in the following, following days, or in the following years, uh, usability of crypto anarchy services will be improved a lot. So, so the next year will be not about about the improvement of protocols, because we have protocols, we have a functional implementation, everything works. The next year of crypto anarchy will be about improving usability. So this exactly. So, so we need just to wait that uh, ordering some, uh, something from crypto markets in the future will be probably uh, same complicated, complicated like, like call your Uber, for example. So it's only a question of time. So in these days, is the question of usability. Awesome. Wonderful. Thanks. All right. Great. And I think that'll do it for time. Bravo. Spasiba Bolshoi. Thank you. In a world where Antifa riots in the city streets, cops rage out of control, and the leader of the free world is a fat-ass casino owner, one event stands alone to make anarchy great again. I actually love humanity. That is why I'm an anarchist. Backwards in the building like we the ceiling. We healing no matter who find it appealing. I'm here and I got a feeling that we'll be dealing a lot of pain with a pin of ceiling. Get drilled in your head that we are monsters and yeah, we come from the slums and for months we've been pumped. But for once I am now comfortable. I want to grow. I want some more success and I want to know that greatness can't be rushed. Can't be less. So face the bus. Feel free to hate on us. We lace them up. Dudes, we done paid them up. Keep snakes away from us and safe from us. You might want to be. Remember when clowns used to make fun of me and now they want to be me. See me and they run at me. I'm going to be the greatest. Yeah, I want to be. But I am not the one to be the biggest for the sake of being played. I'm here. Like I never left. Set to hell. Nah, because I can't just fail. So just prepare your ears. It'll get for real. Take from here. We will never take the sale. It's my time. My mind and my thoughts. My thoughts and my thoughts. My words and my loss. When will I fall off? It's a chance for me. You are now listening to Veracity. Yeah. Fuck the media. Fuck the banks. Fuck drone strikes. Fuck tanks. Fuck hunger. Fuck war. Fuck ignoring of the poor. Fuck the left. Fuck the right. Fuck the government. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you.